everybody, it's Eden from Lemonardi. I have two more books from my previous library haul to review. This is the first one, Chomp by Carl Hyacin. <laughs> Now, I love Carl Hyacinth's books. I actually have another one back here. Exactly, you see it. But it's called Hoot. Carl Hyacinth is really funny because all of his books are about his adventures in Florida. They're not all true stories, but they're all based on when he lived in Florida and the things he experienced and saw. I also have another book that I'm going to review by Carl Hyacinth, Scat which is about a teacher that gets lost and there's a panther or whatever chasing after him. I don't know because I am not finished reading it. But make sure that you like and subscribe so that you don't miss that book review. This one is Chomp. It's about a wrangler and his son who get hired to do a TV show about a survivor in the Everglades named Derek Badger. Derek Badger was chomped by one alligator, one snapping turtle, two snakes, one bat, and 2,000 mosquitoes. Now, I know about mosquito bites. Mosquitoes eat me like I am apple pie with some ice cream on top and a cherry or lasagna or something good because they just won't stop biting me. I got a lot of mosquito bites this summer. And I can relate to this book because I've been bitten by a lot of stuff. Not like by actual animals. I think I once got nipped by a very tiny dog because I kept trying to pet him while he was eating and he accidentally bit me. But that didn't really hurt because he did, it didn't actually like break the skin. It just felt like a little because he was really tiny. In this book, Derek Badger's show is super fake. It doesn't look like it, but he hired the Wrangler so that he could get exotic animals to wrestle with on his show, but the wrestling was super fake. The Wrangler told him that, and then he was determined to make the show real and authentic because he really does have a private truck. Derek Badger actually had his own private camper that he would go and eat his fancy cheesecakes and sandwiches. The TV crew was always there to help him. He didn't actually even camp out there. He took his private helicopter to his top floor hotel with a jacuzzi and room service after he was done filming. It was super fake. He was determined to make it real and camp outside and he decided that he was going to cook a live bat and eat it. The bat didn't really want to be cooked so the bat bit him in the face. Derek, as it turns out, was a believer in vampires and thought that he was turning into a vampire. So he ran away to keep everybody else out of danger of him being a vampire, which he obviously wasn't. He ran away and everybody was looking for him and they didn't have any idea how to find him because they didn't know that he thought he was turning into a vampire. And who would guess that he was turning into a vampire? So, unless they were going to search his trailer and see the vampire movies and books all over his trailer, they might know that he ran away because he thought it was a vampire. Derek Badger was lost in the Everglades. I myself have only been lost once. When I was little, I was really scared of getting lost because I watched movies where kids would get lost, like Boxcar Children and Milo and Otis. You probably never heard of that movie because it was like, we got it from like a random store. I don't think it's like, it's a random movie, but I used to watch lots of movies about kids and animals getting lost and it was really scary for me. And whenever my mom had to take a different route because of traffic or something, I'd be like, are we lost? And then I'd be really scared that we would never go home again. We would never see our family ever again. And then I'd never see my dog or my room or anything. And it was terrifying. I'm not scared of getting lost anymore. Not unless it's like really, really far away from home. But I'm not that scared of getting lost. But I did get lost once when I was like seven and we were in the mall. I was with my mom and my two brothers 
and we were walking and I saw this jewelry kiosk and I was looking at it but I didn't see that they kept walking when I started to walk away I turned the wrong way and started walking and I didn't see that they had left I was like oh my gosh where did they go and I started crying and I was scared that a mall cop was gonna come and take me to an orphanage I have to be all alone and then I ran up to the mall map to see if I could find them somehow and then I realized I didn't know what store we were going to I was like no how am I gonna find them and then I was like well maybe if I go to the parking lot then I can catch them when they come back to the car but then I didn't know how long we were gonna be in the mall then somebody would probably find me and take me to an orphanage again. Then I turned around and my brother had come back. He was like, what are you doing? And I was like, I don't know. I was looking at the jewelry kiosk and then you were gone. It wasn't as long as I thought it was. It was like 30 seconds of me being lost, but it was terrifying for a whole 30 seconds. Despite the terrifying being lost part in this book, it was really, really funny because the Wrangler is actually kind of crazy. In the beginning of the book, he had always had these headaches. He had brain damage because he was outside and a lizard had gotten cold. It was solid as a rock because lizards are cold-blooded and when it's cold, they're like really stiff and they don't move. And it was a giant lizard like this big and it fell out of the tree and landed on his head hard as a brick. So he had brain damage from then on and he was kind of cooked which made the book really funny and his son always had to make sure that he didn't mouth off and lose the job for them because they really needed the money. The boy's mom was in China being a teacher so they could get them some money and they really needed the job. Mickey Cray, who is the Wrangler, did not like Derek Badger very much because he was super fake and he had a fake tan and everything about the show was fake. Wahoo, who is the boy, did not want them to lose the job. There's one more character, Tuna, who came on the expedition with them because she was running away from her dad who beat her all the time. Her mom was up in New York taking care of their grandma and she had nowhere to go. Wahoo knew her from school but he didn't know her very well and they couldn't just leave her in the Walmart parking lot living in the RV with her dad who was always drunk and beating her. So I loved this book. It was really funny. It was really interesting. It only took me like two days to read it. I would recommend this book for 10 to 14. It was really, really good. I recommend all of Carl Hyacinth's books. Hoot, Blush, Scat, all of those because they're really funny and they're enlightening about the wildlife in Florida. Hoot was actually about conserving the owl's habitats. It helped me learn. They're actually kind of educational but not on purpose. You learn about wildlife and how animals are people too. I feel like Carl Hyacin really liked animals, just like in all of his books are about some sort of animal. Who was about an owl, Chomp was an alligator, Scat was about a panther. I don't know what Flush was about because I've never read I never read that one, but I just know that's one of his books. That's all for today. Make sure that you guys like and subscribe so that you don't miss Scat or my other booktube -a reviews and my very last book from the book haul, Paddington Goes to Town. Bye! Can get when you're at the library since I only have three of them it's like every other one starting at three and it's kind of ironic that I actually hadn't read the first one and I read all the way up to 12 so I'm going to do my review on Dork Diaries number one so since this is the first book this is when Nikki transfers to her new school WDC and she meets her best friends Chloe and